Here I give the formal definition of a Bessie sequence. But to do so, I need to quickly remind the viewer of the three fundamental structure types. The first one is called a two-cycle structure. This is simply a cyclic sequence in which there is a pattern that repeats twice. The second structure is called a mirrored structure. And you can see in what way this list of values is mirrored relative to the center line. And the final structure is an AMP structure. AMP stands for adjacent mirrored pairs. And it can be denoted in this way here. The vertical bars are just meant to indicate important positions within the sequence that aid us in discerning whether the sequence has the corresponding structure. Okay, so the two cycle condition, the mirrored condition, and the AMP condition will be mentioned in just a moment in our formal definition of Bessie sequences. So let's begin. A Bessie sequence is any sequence of n zeros and n ones satisfying the following three conditions. Condition one, x sub j needs to be equal to the complement of x sub j plus n. The complement here just means the opposite digit value. So if x sub j is originally a 1, then x sub j bar is equal to a 0. Similarly, if the original x sub j value is a 0, x sub j bar is a 1. So the first condition is called the two cycle condition. Now the mirrored condition is met if this is satisfied. And finally, the AMP condition is met if this here is satisfied. For example, consider the complementary pair of Bessie sequences of order 8. And you may recall that that's the case. If there is a Bessie sequence of a certain length, its complement, which simply refers to switching zeros for ones and ones for zeros, will also be a quote Bessie sequence. It will also satisfy these conditions if the original sequence does. Now when we write sequences in our work, we omit the commas and as I mentioned a vertical bar is drawn to mark the center of the sequence. So we'll go ahead and verify that the three conditions are met for the first Bessie sequence of order 8. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. So let's take a look at our assignments. So we have, uh, of course, values 1001-0110. That's our supposed Bessie sequence. And I've written out the corresponding x sub j terms that go with each of these digits here. And of course, we have eight of them. So let's check the two cycle condition. And also a note that n in this particular case is 4, and 2n, of course, is 8. Okay, so let's check condition 1 over here, okay? So, is it the case that x sub 1, which is equal to 1, up above, is that equal to the complement of the value x sub 1 plus 4, which, of course, is just equal to x sub 5, well, x of 5 is equal to 0. The complement of 0 is 1. So indeed, we get equality there. So for the first value in our sequence, it satisfies the two-cycle condition. Okay, what about x of 2? Well, x of 2 is right here, is 0. Is that equal to the complement of x of 2 plus 4? Well, that's equal to the complement of x sub 6, and of course x sub 6 is 1, and the complement of 1 is 0, so we do get equality. So we would write a yes there. What about x sub 3? Well, x sub 3 is 0. Is that equal to the complement of x sub 3 plus 4? 
In other words, x sub 7. Well, x sub 7 is 1. The complement of 1 is 0. So that checks out. Now, what about x sub 4, which is equal to 1? Is that equal to the complement of x sub 4 plus 4? Well, that's equal to the complement of x sub 8, and that in turn is equal to the complement of 0, which is equal to 1. So we do get equality there as well. Now, because of the nature of taking complements in this way, we have also verified that the two-cycle condition is met for x sub 5, x sub 6, x sub 7, and x sub 8. Okay, so the first condition, namely the two-cycle condition, checks out just fine. Now, what about the mirrored condition? So here is the mirrored condition. Okay, now is it true that x sub 1, which is equal to 1, is that equal to the complement of x sub 9 minus 1? Okay, so look at what's happening here. So it's 2n plus 1. We've mentioned that 2n is 8. So 2n plus 1 would be 9. And then we're subtracting the subscript. So that's why we have a 9 minus 1. Well, that's equal to the complement of x sub 8. And that in turn is equal to the complement of 0, which is equal to 1. So the mirrored condition checks out for our first term x sub 1. What about x sub 2, which is equal to 0? Is that equal to the complement of x sub 9 minus 2? Well, that's equal to the complement of x sub 7, which is equal to the complement of 1, which is equal to 0. So yes, indeed, that checks out as well. Okay, x sub 3, which is equal to 0, is that equal to the complement of x sub 9 minus 3, which is equal to the complement of x sub 6, which is equal to the complement of 1, and that in turn is 0. So we can say yes for x sub 3, satisfying the mirrored condition. And finally, for x sub 4, which is equal to 1, is it equal to the complement of x sub 9 minus 4, which is equal to the complement of x sub 5, and that is equal to the complement of 0, which is equal to 1. So yes, indeed, that checks out as well. And for the same reason that we mentioned up here, we've actually verified the mirrored condition for x sub 5, x sub 6, x sub 7, and x sub 8. Okay, and then finally, let's go on to the AMP condition, which is listed down here below. I do want to point out that there's built-in redundancy in this definition here, okay? So it's not a problem to have that, but the redundancy is there nonetheless, okay, as we'll see. Okay, the AMP condition. Okay, so x sub 1, which is equal to 1, that needs to be equal to the complement of x sub 1 plus 1. So we need to check that here. Okay, so for the AMP condition, we have to look at the subscript. If the subscript is odd, we go with this assignment. If the subscript is even, we go with this assignment here. Well, in the case of the first term in our sequence, x sub 1 has a subscript that's odd, namely 1. So we need to check whether the upper condition is met. Okay, and what is that? Well, we need x sub 1 to be equal to the complement of x sub 1, 1 for j, plus 1. Well, that's equal to the complement of x sub 2. Well, x sub 2 is 0, and the complement of 0 is 1. So yes, indeed, that checks out just fine. Now, you may notice that once we've confirmed the AMP condition for x sub 1, we have also confirmed that x sub 2 meets the AMP condition. Because with this equality here, we can say that x sub 2 is equal to the complement of x sub 1. x sub 2, because the subscript is even, we would appeal to this bottom portion of our definition. 
That requires, in the case of x sub 2, that it be equal to the complement of x sub 2 minus 1. Well, that's just equal to the complement of x sub 1. So since the complement of x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1, we can say that x sub 2 is equal to the complement of x sub 1. So we've met the necessary requirement for the AMP condition for x sub 2. Okay, So that's why you see just odd subscripts here, because that will automatically imply that the terms with even subscripts will also satisfy the AMP condition. Okay, so let's turn to x sub 3. Of course, the subscript 3 is odd, so we appeal to the top portion of our definition. So x sub 3, go up here, is 0. Is it true that 0 is equal to the complement of x sub 3 plus 1? Well, that's equal to the complement of x sub 4. And x sub 4 is 1, and the complement of 1 is 0. So yes, we get equality there. And that also confirms the AMP condition for the term x sub 4. Okay, what about x sub 5? Well, the subscript's odd. So we need to check the top portion of our definition. x sub 5, we can see a 0. Is it true that 0 is equal to the complement of x sub 5 plus 1, which is equal to the complement of x sub 6, and that's equal to the complement of 1, which is equal to 0. So yes, that checks out as well. And finally, x sub 7, which is equal to 1, we need it to be the case that that is equal to the complement of x sub 7 plus 1, which is equal to the complement of x sub 8, and x sub 8 is 0, and the complement of 0 is 1, so yes indeed. This sequence satisfies the AMP condition. And of course, we've shown that it satisfies all three conditions. The two-cycle condition, the mirrored condition, and the AMP condition. I leave it to the viewer to verify that the inversion of the Bessie sequence that we've been working with, and its inversion is simply 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. I ask the viewer to verify that this indeed satisfies the two-cycle condition, the mirrored condition, and the AMP condition, which is what is needed for it to be a Bessie sequence. Now, it is true that there are infinitely many Bessie sequences. Okay, so there's a lot of them, technically, infinitely many of them. But nonetheless, they are relatively rare. Okay, so what do we mean by that? How could an infinite number of things be relatively rare? Well, that's what we explain here. More specifically, there are two complementary Bessie sequences. We saw the complementary pair of order 8 just a moment ago, but there will be two complementary Bessie sequences of order 2 to the m for each odd value of m. So that would be 2 to the first, 2 to the third, which is 8, 2 to the fifth, which is 32, and so forth. Now, even though there's an infinite number of odd powers of 2, as far as viewing the set of all natural numbers, this is a, quote, small subset of that infinite set. Also, it's worth mentioning that, um, as shown on this channel, there are two complementary quasi-Bessie sequences of order 2m, but this time for each even value of m. And the two-cycle mirrored and AMP conditions for quasi-Bessy sequences are the same except for a small change to the mirrored condition. So let's take a look at that. Quasi-Bessy sequences, you may remember, do not have the same degree of invariance relative to the common systematic shuffling procedures used today. 
it's invariant under a good portion of those, but not as large of a set of shuffles as a bona fide Bessie sequence is. Okay, so quasi Bessie sequence, the two cycle condition is the same. The mirrored condition will be slightly different as we'll see, but the A and P condition is the same. So let's take a look at where they differ. So given a sequence of 2n values where n of them are zeros and n of them are ones, for a sequence to be a quasi Bessy sequence, the mirrored condition requires the following to be true. Okay, so just look at how similar they are. X sub j needs to be equal to, not the complement of x sub 2n plus 1 minus j, but the actual original value of x sub 2 plus 1 minus j. Okay, so that's the only difference for a quasi Bessy sequence. We don't require these two values to be complementary, we actually require them to be the same. So if x sub j is 0, this term needs to be 0. If x sub j is 1, this term needs to be 1 as well. So that's the only difference. Okay, so that is for quasi-Bessy sequences. So thank you for watching.